Well, the title you know, uh, for today, you know, it, it came, it was pretty quick. We needed a title. And uh, it's Integral Perspectives on the Planetary Era. But it really could have been also uh, a planetary perspective on the integral age. You can take your pick. Um, and hopefully that will become clear uh, after what I share with you today. Um, I want to begin with a quotation. I just have one, two, three, four, four briefish quotations, one of them very small, uh, that I'll read today. Uh, two from Teilhard, uh, not, not uh, yeah, so Teilhard de Chardin. And, and this is the first one. And we can take it as a kind of, um, what, epigraph for, uh, for today. I can only see one way to escape from this state of uncertainty, which threatens to paralyze all positive action. We must rise above the storm, the chaos of surface detail, and from a higher vantage point, look for the outline of some great and significant phenomenon. That is what I have tried to do, and it has led me to accept, however improbable they may appear, the reality and the consequences of the major cosmic process, which, for want of a better name, I have called human planetization. Second part. The very fact of our becoming aware of this profound ordering of things will enable human collectivization to pass beyond the enforced phase, where it is now, into the free phase, that in which humans, having at last understood that they are inseparably joined elements of a converging whole, and having learnt in consequence to love the preordained forces that unite them, a natural union of affinity and sympathy will supersede the forces of compulsion. Okay. So I had first read this uh, many years ago and just reread it last night, actually, um, anticipating today. And I'm and, um, just so struck by its prophetic character uh, uh, as so much of what Teilhard writes. All right, so one of the, uh, along with planetization, one of the key words here that uh, I want to draw your attention to is converging whole. Uh, which, at least in the, the English translation, whole is capitalized. I'm not sure if uh, in the, the original French it was. But uh, with this idea of a converging whole, I think we get at uh, the, the essential meaning of what, of what uh, uh, integral, what we, how we can understand integral. If we uh, look at the term integral, of course, it comes in, in our context from Shurabindo. Uh, and his notion of integral yoga or integral non-dualism. Uh, and then it was taken up by uh, Jean Gebser uh, in his book, The Ever-Present Origin, to refer to this new age that was dawning, the integral, aperspectival age. And perhaps we'll, uh, we'll have uh, the opportunity to say more about that later. It's not really necessary, though. I think the, the essential meaning of integral uh, is this intuition of wholeness. And by wholeness, we can, uh, uh, we can approach this wholeness, it seems to me, through uh, at least two modes, appealing to our two essential modes of being in the world. One of them is through our sense of being embedded in a kind of spatial manifold, or embodied in a spatial manifold. Right? So wholeness, from that mode, tends to be expressed in terms of a container, something that contains. Or we can approach it through our time sense, our sense of being in some kind of process. And the time sense tends to manifest as narrative, as a story. We tell a story or a narrative about where we are in the process, where we've come from and where we're going. So these two modes, the spatial and the temporal, the, the one that, that uh, evokes uh, a sense of, of embeddedness and inclusion within a totality, kind of spatial totality and um, the embrace of a totality. The temporal, which gives us a sense of situatedness 
in a, a narrative uh, process. Uh, and what's important about both of these is that whether, whether or not you sense yourself to be situated in, in a whole, and, and especially in the center of the whole, or whether you experience yourself as being the subject of a story, right? the subject of a narrative, in both cases, there is a sense of meaningfulness that wherever, whenever you are is not uh, some uh, random or meaningless occasion, but in fact is an expression of intrinsic meaning. Right? So, integral as wholeness, wholeness as uh, simultaneously being uh, embraced uh, and storied in uh, an overarching meaning. Right? This is the essence of what integral is beyond uh, whatever uh, many other details uh, we choose to emphasize. Now, focusing for a second on this second uh, temporal inflection of integral as uh, storied or narrative meaning. Very brief quotation from our beloved Brian Swim from uh, the manuscript that he and Mary Evelyn Tucker have just completed, which I can't wait for it to come out in print, the, jo the Journey of the Universe. And here it is, just a single line. The universe has a story, a beginning, a middle, where we are now, and perhaps in some unimaginable future, an end. You can meditate on this for a long time and get a lot out of it, right? The universe has a story, a beginning, a middle, where we are now, and perhaps in some unimaginable future, an end. Okay. Well, uh, what I want to talk about now, maybe I'll just give you the headings of the sections. First of all, I, I, I really plan on, not on, uh, I plan to talk for no more than uh, another 40 minutes so that we can have some good discussion. <clears throat> so we've had a sense of integral. Next section is eschaton. Z. I'll tell you what that means in a second. Just, just, to give you, just to give you headings. Mapo. Let's see what that is. Uh, whoops. The Great Count. The Code. The Great Turning, it's a lot I know, but I won't get caught up in details, hopefully. And finally, Integral Gaia. Okay, so that's the plan for, uh, for the next 40 minutes or so. <laughs> so we've just talked about uh, Integral in an essential way and relating it to Brian's uh, uh, and Mary Evelyn's line about the universe having a story, and we're in it, we're right in the middle. Well, uh, it would appear that we're also at the end, but many ends. Eschaton uh, is the Greek word for end, particularly the end time, and it comes out of uh, Christian uh, theology, particularly uh, a branch of theology that deals with the end times, or the reflection in the meaning of the end times. Uh, that branch of theology is called eschatology, uh, which we won't really deal with here. We're just, I'm just using this term as a general term for an end time, but I've put it uh, in the plural because it would appear that we are actually in uh, many converging end times. To begin with the, the largest scale, we are at the end of a 65 million year epoch, as Brian uh, has uh, done so much to help us see, the Cenozoic, a geological age, which began with the extinction of the uh, dinosaurs 65 million years ago, uh, and which uh, particularly over the last, um, well, during the 65 million years has, uh, saw the rise of the mammals and an unparalleled level of biodiversity in the planet. Uh, that epoch is coming to an end now, uh, but it's not being caused by a, uh, a meteor, it's being caused by us. 
So this is the first time that we know of uh, in the history of the planet that a geological epoch is being brought to a close by a single species of life. And we are that species. This is unimaginable, 65 million years, right? 65 <laughs> times 1,000, 1,000 years. Unbelievably long, and it's ending now. Okay. It's also, in a sense, the end of a 200,000 year period, uh, which is the period beginning with the origin of our own species, Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens sapiens, to be more precise. Now, why do I say it's the end of our species? I don't mean that we're dying out, although that is a possibility. What I mean is that the way we have understood ourselves as Homo sapiens, I won't put the double, in a sense, uh, uh, um, wildly hubristic uh, doubling of sapiens after sapiens, but technically we're Homo sapiens sapiens because we recognize that there were other wise sapient hominids uh, before us. But our particular species, which emerged about 200,000 years ago, is a variety of Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens sapiens. And arguably, that definition uh, has, self-definition has, has been radically deconstructed, particularly in the last century. Uh, a more uh, interesting, realistic proposal that has uh, been put forward by Edgar Morin, Edgar Morin, is that we are actually Homo sapiens demons. Uh, demons, uh, so we are the wise, insane animal. <coughs> Uh, demons actually has two different senses. One is uh, insane that we recognize in the word dementia, for instance. But uh, it also means potentially inspired in an ecstatic way uh, that we get with the, the Greek word daimon. So demons suggests uh, an opening to the uh, irrational, the pre-rational, the transrational, the irrational, something other than the way that humans have uh, chosen to define themselves uh, as wise animals, which has been um, more or less restricted to a kind of narrow rationalism. Right? So that view of the human as a sort of rational tool-making animal uh, that is, uh, has been bound on this ascent. Remember that TV series, The Ascent of Man? Right? You go from uh, basically from stone tools to uh, rocket ships, actually, just like at the beginning of uh, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 with that origin myth you see at, at the beginning. The difference is that Kubrick puts in the aliens and the obelisk to account for the mutation. But the standard view <coughs> is that we are animals that through our, our opposable thumb and our upright posture, our big brains and our tools, have uh, mastered the world through our reason. Okay? Well, that view is is arguably over it's been it's been completely radically deconstructed and we need a new view of the human and this is uh, I find a very fruitful exciting one sapiens demons okay. in any case it's arguably the end of a 200,000 year period uh, on biological terms as well because our genetic makeup our whole physiology is being altered now and not only through uh, the possibility of genetic engineering but uh, through the alteration of the biosphere that we are uh, responsible for, and our bodies, of course, are participating in that. <clears throat>